The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got some inflation data out this morning. Markets higher yet again. We get the futures at 44.14 right now. Now, futures, just because they just rolled over to the active contract above the cash value, but boy, you're talking about some lofty prices across the board right now. You get the S&Ps up six tenths percent. This all ahead of a Fed decision tomorrow as they are expected to pause or skip for the first time in about 16 months, uh, 15 months, excuse me. NASDAQ 100 up another percent. Tech stocks catch a bid as we get some lower yield coming at you. We get the Dow up 130 points. You got Bitcoin up 300 points, $300, 26,175. We have a weaker dollar. We have lower yields. You got a higher gold contract. Gold up $10 at 1979. Crude down to $66 yesterday. You're back to 69.18 right now on the price of crude. You jump over to silver, up 20 cents at 24.26, and we gotta jump to notes and bonds, man. Look at that volatility on that CPI data. We'll jump over to the data in a moment. Nonetheless, we have higher price. You got lower yield. I'm gonna jump over to the 10-year yield right now. We are looking at a 10-year yield of 3.7%, 3.7%. All things considered, I mean, you're only up about eight ticks from where you were. A lot of this already baked into the markets, folks. So quite an acceleration on pretty much a number that was basically expected, and the market is exuberant, that yes, we are going to pause, we are going to skip, writing's on the wall, and does this skip become a pause? That becomes the conversation that we shift to. You jump over to the dollar index. There's your action. Yesterday, pushing 103.70. Today, 103.13. You're down 52 pennies right now. 103.13 on the dollar index. So as I said, what do you have? You have a weaker dollar. You have lower yields. As we now are sure, Fed fund futures, I was listening to Bloomberg earlier, just right after that number, 8% is what they're putting at the price that they may raise rates tomorrow. I would say that that's an astronomical rate considering... The, prof um, the probability that they do raise is probably way below 8%. And maybe that Fed fund futures 8% just comes from people protecting themselves with some type of insurance, even though you wouldn't assign necessarily an 8% probability. That would mean that tomorrow the Fed would be hiking one out of 12 times. I don't even see it. I'd say it's not happening one out of 100 times, man. The writing's on the wall. They got what they wanted. They forecast what they were going to do. If there were no surprises, there were no surprises. We come into tomorrow morning. And yeah, I mean, you know, great question in the den. Just talking about Fletch saying, does anybody think that they could come in for a shock and awe? And maybe they need to, okay? That's a reasonable case to make that maybe they need to. Maybe the data is not quite indicative of going back to 2%. But that is not what this Fed does. That's not what the chairman does. He's pretty indicative of what he's going to do in terms of putting the message out there. The message is out there. And the writing is on the wall at this point that they're going to pause slash skip. And we'll see how it goes from there. Now, let's get into the data. I like how the journal puts this up on the day that we always get this data. A nice, simple chart. This is just on the front page of the journal online, wsj.com, wallstreetjournal.com. Consumer, consumer prices in May rose 4%. Now, that's your headline number. That's year over year. It's very important to look at the headline number versus the core number because the Fed is not going to watch the price of crude. They're going to watch the price of everything else. Food and energy is taken out, okay? Food is a relative factor as well. Their policies do not impact food and energy as much as they may impact other parts of the economy. That's why they don't focus on them as much, okay? Doesn't mean they don't matter. I'm sure they tell you crude matters heavily when you talk about the inflation factors that are facing most American consumers, but their interest rate policies do not impact the price of crude. So why would they let those 
prices dictate their interest rate policy when their changes aren't going to matter in the crude market. It's an easier example than food, but the same thing, in their opinion at least, translates over to food. Crude's an easy one to understand. Uh, Fed policy would have to go extremely far to impact crude prices when you think about the existential threats to crude, whether it's war, et cetera, going on, the Saudi OPEC cuts, et cetera. Now, Excuse me, look at the drop off on headline, man. So headline gets all the press, 4% year over year. Now, you get into the numbers in terms of where we are. This is the numbers I want to look at. This is a simple comparison of the estimates on the right, the actual of what we got at 8.30 this morning on the left. CPI, month over month, going up at 0.1%. You got to love that. You annualize it, you multiply it by 12, that's 1.2%. Well, folks, we got some some very friendly energy prices built in here. OK, core CPI month over month in line with estimates as well. 0.4 percent. When you go year over year, the headline number is 4 percent. You go year over year core and you're actually hot at 5.3 versus 5.2. But considering the Fed had indicated what they were going to do, this number pretty much in line. The writing is on the wall. What is interesting here, OK, is excuse me, you look at the number, I mean, core CPI at 0.4%, folks, annualized is 4.8%, okay? And you take a look at this chart here, yeah, you could say the trend is your friend, it's going down. Folks, we're at 5.3%, we gotta get to 2%. There's a small trajectory to the downside here. The Fed is gonna make the case that inflation is abating and they are going to give it room to catch up. But there's a couple cases out there to make that that is an assurity, okay? You could even say it's likely. What if it's a 60-40? Are you factoring in the 40% probability that it doesn't happen? We had some pretty lofty S&P prices, man. We heard some pretty lofty tech prices. You had Apple hitting all-time highs yesterday. There's some contrarian stuff going on here in terms of coming in. I mean, think about this, right? Apple is coming into all-time highs when we are still in a hiking cycle, man. The Fed has been hiking for 15 straight months. You just accelerated from 124 to 184. You just added a trillion dollars in market cap to Apple in the final six months of the Fed's hiking cycle. Why did that happen? You could make the case, folks, that the market is anticipating that the Fed is going to give some room to pause slash skip. And I think the market has figured out that they are near the end of that cycle. Maybe they have to come in with one. Maybe they have to come in with two. The real conversation now is going to shift, in my opinion, in terms of when do they consider a cut? And it's a it's it's you start getting ahead of yourself. But that's where I think the market could really be surprised. I don't think you have to have, you know, seven more hikes. But you may have to let this play out then longer than people expected. And you may have to have some more pain to really bring down inflation when you're talking about a core CPI number at 5.3%. You're talking about a core CPI number month over month up 0.4%. You annualize it, that's up 4.8%. And that is May numbers versus April. Was, it, was inflation here in April, folks? When you were doing your taxes, was inflation here? Of course it was here. Well, guess what? In May, it went up 0.4%. From May to April, it went up 4.8% annualized. Just keep it in mind, there's a long way to go in this market. We're gonna have some volatility, and markets have been on a one-way trip to higher prices. But guess what? We get to find out where we go. We got Fed decision tomorrow. We come back with we Kevin Hanks. Don't go away. Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Can't wait to see what happens on the market open, right? We got higher prices, but we get to find out where supply and demand meet. Coming up at... 9.30 this morning as I jump around. Uh, and right now we got the S&Ps up 22 points. We got the NASDAQ 100 up 135. And yeah, let's jump to some of the other stories I was reading this morning. This one's an interesting one. So when's this out? This morning, last night, let's see. This morning, 6 a.m., story from Bloomberg. J.P. Morgan's foil to the bonds. Our back crowd is sticking to cash. It's important to get all perspectives, man. When you jump around, you take a look at notes, bonds, right, across the board. Uh, we got, what do we got? We got lower yield, and we're going to jump to, we'll get to that story in a minute. But right now, we're going to jump to our man, Kevin Hinks, from TD Ameritrade Network, folks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. Fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network right here at noon Eastern time. Check it out. And boy, we got quite a morning. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, interesting morning is right. I, I think, um, you know, this CPI data was going to do one of two things, Tommy. It was either going to throw this Fed meeting severely in doubt or lock it in. And I believe, at least for the time being, it's locked it in. Should it? I don't know. I'm not sure that it should have locked it in, but at least by the CME Fed funds futures, it looks like it has, Tommy. But there's still a lot of things in this report that are concerning, uh, but it's not energy. Tommy, there's if you look at the table on the CPI data, there's seven lines that deal with energy. All of them were lower, and some of them significantly lower. Why? Well, just look at crude oil prices, right? Look at natural gas. Look at crude oil, what it's done in the last month. Now, the rest of it, there's, uh, it's pretty mixed. Take energy out of this, and it's pretty mixed, Tommy. Um, used cars and trucks. Up 4.4% for the second time in a, in, a, in two months. It's up another 4.4%. Food, up 02 Away from home, up 05 At home, up 0.1%. So shelters, up 06 uh, Transportation services, up 08 
So take out energy, which is down significantly across the board, and this number gets a lot more mixed. And that's why you saw, you know, 0.4 month over month in core and uh, year over year only down to 5.3, Tommy. So we may pause or we may skip here, but, boy, I don't think the Fed's work is done yet, Tommy. It's a great summation, man. And I, as you were chatting, Kevin, I was taking a look just at the price of light sweet crude on the Thinkorswim platform. Have it pulled up here on a weekly basis. You go back, even myself, but I've been hearing some of those energy numbers. And on a uh, year-over-year basis, you know, the headline number, what are we at, 4% 4, uh, 4 on the headline number now? And, boy, it's remarkable that just a year ago how quickly – uh, we were pushing $120 in the price of crude, man, on the weekly of May 30th, 2022, $120.46. This morning, I got light sweet crude trading at $69.09. Remarkable. Uh, we got a Fed meeting tomorrow, Kevin. As you mentioned, the core number, pretty remarkable. When we get numbers from May, Kevin, 0.4%. You laid it out month over month. That's compared to April. Pretty sure we all know that inflation was around in April. They're still going up 0.4%. As a trader, lots of optimism in this market, man. We're in a bull market again. You have tech stocks roaring higher. What do you think about the optimism maybe built into this market, even if we get that pause skip tomorrow with prices pretty lofty as we're approaching levels we haven't seen in some time now? Yeah, these markets are getting severely overbought, Tommy, and they're being led by a small group of stocks. Now, you know, if, if the rest of the market starts to catch up, you know, the dollar is significantly lower this morning. Yields are significantly lo lower this morning. That's going to favor stocks. I don't know when, if the market will correct from here or, or fatigue on the upside. And I don't know what level. That's the million, it used to be the million dollar question. Now it's probably the billion dollar question, Tommy. But th th this market seems a little bit extended, but markets get overbought. Markets get oversold, Tommy. That's why we trade them. Pretty, rem pretty. I, I just jumping through the charts as we're chatting about. I was jumping through Apple, of course. Apple, interesting that they make new highs yesterday. Kevin, Kevin, I was saying in the first segment, pretty remarkable that you have Apple making new highs when technically we are still in a hiking cycle for ten consecutive hikes going back fifteen months, and you actually have Apple coming into an all-time high. The day before, we potentially get the end of that. Could it be contrarian? We get to find out, man. But we get some volatility, as you said, because I don't think this is over quite yet either. Maybe the trend has begun, but boy, we got a long way to go if that's the case, especially when you look at that core CPI number, 5.3%, uh, man. That's not 2%, so we will see. With that in mind, Kevin, we got a Fed decision tomorrow, man. I'm sure you guys are going to have plenty to talk about at 12 noon today on Fast Market. But are you discussing any equities coming up as well, Kevin? Yeah, it's kind of light in terms of uh, earnings. We'll get Lennar and Kroger and Adobe later in the week. But for this, we're going to, for today's show, we're going to cover Home Depot that's having an investor day today. Like nice. Foley was going to talk about General Motors that uh, you know is in the in the news a lot and now getting closer with their alliance with Tesla. And then we'll cover Salesforce in in the final segment. So three good names today. Home Depot though is one to watch with their investor day coming up. Nice. And I, you know, I was taking a look at Salesforce earlier, Kevin. These stocks, I mean, we're doing so well in the markets. So we got the NASDAQ 100 now above 15,000, SP futures above 4,400 on the active contract on the Thinkorswim platform. And I found myself saying, could you imagine where the market would be if more than the seven stocks or eight stocks that are leading this market might be higher? As in, you know, you got companies like Amazon that we're trading at almost 190 there at 126 Salesforce came to mind up at 311 you're down to 213 there's a lot of stocks that have some ways that they could catch up when you have a company like Apple that's actually pushing all-time highs which is remarkable uh, Kevin we look forward to the program as always I appreciate the time on a busy morning man we got CPI this morning fed tomorrow we'll, we'll be watching at 12 o'clock today and I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow man nice talking to you Tommy have a great day you too folks check it out uh, Today, tomorrow, you talk about some volatility, and we got to jump over to the VIX, right? 1465 right now, I got on the VIX, and yeah, we were above 15, coming into that number, relatively low volatility, and pretty interesting to see where we go. We got the opening bell in less than five minutes, and as our man Kevin Hinks has said, we get to find out on the open, man. I don't imagine we're going to get some steep sell-offs, but boy, how high can we go? Seems like every single day, the market's pricing in 
a 20 to 30 point S&P run, even last week when we got some low volatility, right? This thing has been on a one-way trip since March, man. From 3,900, we paused for a while, right? April and May, and then we've extended that gain yet again, pushing 4,400. I mean, just look at, just since where we, when was that? May 24th, man. We were at 4114. You're talking about almost 300 S&P points. Keep in mind, you got a futures rollover that added maybe 30 or 40 points in there as well. But quite a run into this number. And all I will say is that the market is forward looking. OK, and the writing's been on the wall. The writing was on the wall last week that the Fed was going to do what they're going to do tomorrow outside of a shock. We now know there's going to be no shock. And uh, yeah, we get to find out, man. We jump over to yields because that's going to be an important one as well. Yields right now, we're up by 12 basis points in the 10-year. We jump over to the dollar index. Dollar index, whoops, DXY. Yeah, down about 45 pennies, 103.20. And when we come back, folks, we'll be giving you a little bit of the ulterior case, though. Uh, talking about a few people, or at least a couple, or at least one, who runs an $8.7 billion fund is still sitting in cash. And guess what? He's saying, you know what? It might not be that easy, man. Inflation might not be that easy, what everybody's talking about. We'll talk about that. We'll see where we go on the open, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets opening on S&P, above 4,400 on the futures. You're up to 4,415. Right now, we're trading at 4,403, positive by about a third of percent. NASDAQ 100, positive by three quarters percent, 15,094, 15,000. And as I was saying to Kevin, I mean, could you imagine if any company besides the Magnificent Seven or the Spectacular Eight or whatever you want to call it, the market's held up so well. And all of the gains recently have come from seven or eight stocks. Could you imagine? I mean, there is room to the upside, but the other stocks got to do it. That's my opinion, okay? As in, there's room for this market to run. But Apple's not going to do it when it just added a trillion dollars over the last six months to its market cap, okay? Microsoft, similar fashion. You're talking about adding almost $800 billion in market cap from its run up from 220 up to 334. Microsoft has, I think, about 7.5 billion shares outstanding. Let's pull it up exactly. 7.435. We'll call it 7.5 exactly. And you have traded up $115. <laughs> and you got 7, excuse me, 0.5 billion shares outstanding. Yeah, that's over. It's a remarkable. Over 800 billion right now. What are they pushing? So Microsoft is now at 2.5. Where is Apple on the valuation? They got to be getting close. I think they got to get to, yeah, 2.88. They got to get above, what do they got to get? Yeah, they got to get above 190, 190 something to be coming in at a $3 trillion corporation. But it's got to be the other companies. But guess what? There is room in the S&P 500 for some of the other companies to pick up in terms of some of the laggards. Amazon, barely at a 382 of its acceleration lower, okay? Uh Fast market, Kevin Hinks, our man. They're going to be talking about Salesforce. Salesforce, let's back it up even further. Look at that one, right? All the way up, all the way down, all the way back. They're at only 50% of the move they had. There is room in this market, man, but it's going to be have to have to be some of the other different equities. I mean, even Tesla, okay? Tesla's at 254 from 414, I think, of Netflix. Now, these are just the stocks that everybody loves, let alone some of the other companies in the S&P 500 that have underperformed that nobody knows about, right? It's Tesla, uh, excuse me, Netflix, only at the 50% of that number. Uh, Facebook's probably got room to run. They're all the way back at the 618. Quite a run for them, man. 88 to 275. 384 is still the high. There's still more than $100 off the high, though. So that is one of the scenarios out there that's interesting to play. We jump back to yields, the 10-year right now, right at around 3.7%. You look at where we are on this chart, and let's talk a little bit of yields. Let's talk a little bit of inflation. This article out there this morning... Talking about, to do the headline again, J.P. Morgan's foil to the bonds or back crowd is sticking to cash. Inflation beast is not going away anytime soon. Egan? Egan? Uh, this gentleman, William Egan, is that how you pronounce it maybe, uh, is not about to apologize for his bond fund's performance this year. He's in 60%. Cash is the number, even though that 60 is up there as well. I think he says he's in 60% cash, something like that down here. Come on, where are we? All right, let's get to the important part about this. Number one, you're talking about a gentleman who runs a fund that's uh, almost $9 billion for J.P. Morgan, trailing 60% of its peers after trouncing nearly every one of them last year. Okay, he's at 2.2%. The kicker, though, is that everybody else is at 2.3%, and it's been a smooth 2% because he's in a lot of money markets right now is where he is. Yeah, the bulk of his portfolio is in cash right now, okay? People are getting this wrong. Listen, this is one man's opinion, but you want to hear some of these cases, man, because there is a group thing going on, I think, in Washington, uh, Washington um, in on Wall Street. And Kevin made some great points there, laying out why, you know, the headline number is very enticing. But there are things in this report that are indicative that we have a ways to go at a minimum. People are getting this wrong, okay? Pandemic stimulus has unleashed this inflation beast that is not going to go away anytime soon. The Fed's going to have interest. Fed's going to have to keep interest rates high for a while, okay? He's not saying they're going to have to hike them extraordinarily. They're going to have to keep them high for a while, though. What they talk about here is that there is a real consensus in this market. I'm trying to get the exact quotes that they go here. Okay. 
he thinks the Fed's going to keep rates high for a while, making the annual rate he's getting on the money market fund a bit above 5%, a better investment than the 5- and 10-year notes yielding less than 4%. Because if you think it's going to stay there, then the 5-year and the 10-year aren't yielding as much as they should be if rates are going to remain higher for longer, okay? And this is where it is. Okay, so the foil line, okay, he's become something of a foil to the yields are about to sink crowd on Wall Street. Their view, which is now something of a consensus that yields are about to sink, is that the economy is starting to buckle and will take inflation down with it. And this, in turn, will prompt Fed policymakers to pivot as soon as year end from rate hikes to rate cuts. I would just be very skeptical. There's a long way to go. A lot has to happen. And to reiterate back to this number, man, you need this core number back at two. This core number needs to be back at two, or at least has to be on its way back to two, and we have a ways to go. We've had a couple spikes in here, okay? The trend is your friend for sure, but look how long we've been in this for, man, right? You're talking about a run-up that's lasted over two years. This acceleration began at the beginning of 2021. You could barely make the case that a year and a half later we potentially have peaked but our peak has brought us from six and a half to five and a half, even 6.35, something like that to, you know, you're down what, six or seven tenths percent. But folks, you're down six or seven tenths percent in a period of about six or seven months. You go out another six or seven months and you got core still sitting at 4.7 percent or something like that. Are we really going to start cutting when we're at 4.7? Because that means you're going down like a tenth of a percent every month. That would mean it would take another 26 months to get down from 4.6 to 2. There's a long way to go, okay? So everybody's got a consensus here that the economy's going to buckle, inflation's going to crash with it, that's going to make the Fed pivot as soon as you're in from rate hikes to cuts. That's not everybody, even if, you know, and it's important to realize you've got guys that have crushed it in, in terms of last year running billions of dollars saying it's not going to be that easy, man. And everybody's getting a little bit ahead of themselves. Now, these two gentlemen, they talk about this gentleman as well, Scott Solomon. He runs the $4.2 billion fund with London-based Arif Hussein. And he was with Agin when they were in 2022, okay? They actually were alone, those two funds among 200 peers that generated a positive return last year. They ran a bond fund, man, when the Fed had a hiking cycle like no one had ever seen, and they were positive on the year, okay? The bond market, unprecedented route. You've seen all the charts of the acceleration of the Fed hiking cycle faster and higher than we've ever seen, and these guys nailed it. So there's something going on in this economy you haven't seen in a while. And the people who really nailed it last year, they could be wrong, but I like hearing what they have to say. So be careful out there. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets pushing highs right now. We got the S and P up 31 points. That's seven tenths percent in the positive. 44.19, man. And yeah, maybe you got a little A to B C to D formation brings it up to about 44.25. Your A point here about 43.90. Your B point at about 44.15. That's 25 points to the upside. Your C point is 4400 on the dot. And yeah, 44.25 potentially. Some lofty numbers, man. Getting back to that bond article. Uh, in terms of opinions of inflation, okay? So to summarize this again, you have two gentlemen here they talk about. They talk about this one guy running the J.P. Morgan Strategic Income Opportunities Fund, which with almost $9 billion, William Egan. And then they talk about the other gentleman who had been with him in 2022, who is Scott Solomon, okay, who manages $4.2 billion for London-based Arif Hussein. Now, what Egan says here, okay, Solomon says basically what the market's saying, that basically uh, he expects the Fed to keep it steady Wednesday and signal a slower pace going forward. As you march toward the end of the cycle, the yields curve will normalize. Here's the kicker that Egan said that I agree with that probably caught me most. Egan says... That all this doom and gloom about cuts hasn't been working out and it's not coming just yet, okay? Since the beginning of the year, everyone's been preaching recession and that's worked out terribly for them. He's an owner of an athletic facility in Rhode Island. I think this is a very common experience and I think it's industry-wide, uh, not industry, economy-wide, excuse me, in terms of what's going on. And he's unswayed by the arguments that weaker growth will bring the inflation rate all the way back down. His business, okay, you got a gym, a hockey rink, an indoor track, and a restaurant. Sounds like quite a complex that he's got there in Rhode Island. Is telling him the labor shortage has only gotten worse. Well, he's raised wages. Staff still quit before long. The cost of running the venue keeps climbing. And he boosted the monthly gym membership fee this year to $69 from $49. And he still has more customers than ever. I think that 
is a very common scenario across many businesses right now that they have much higher costs, they have much higher labor costs, unemployment rates at 3.7%. They're trying to keep their employees on the payroll, they're having to pay more. Those employees at an unemployment rate of 3.7% are able to go to other jobs if they need to, and meanwhile, they're able to raise prices in a way that they have not been able to any time recently. The next 10 years in fixed income are not gonna be like the last 40, he said, okay? The investing landscape was permanently changed by the Fed's failure to ward off inflation as the economy rebounded from the pandemic lockdowns. They kept zero rates in place way too long. And here's the kicker. Okay, a great way to end the article. Uh, kudos to whoever put it together because this is the key point, man, and I agree with it. Once inflation is released, once you give manufacturers and producers that pricing power, it is not going away and as a business owner, he can confirm that. And it's not going away because number one, in many instances, they have to. And number two, they can, and they can because many consumers think they have to. So when they have to, they can. And even if they don't have to, they can because many consumers hear these stories, know about the cost of living, and understand that guess what? Costs are going up, businesses have to pay more, and they have to raise prices. That has not gone away, not even a close. So we'll see where we go from there. All right, let's jump to a little rent. Rent may be getting cheaper, man. This one's an interesting one for sure. So over at the Journal, new lease rents are poised to fall on an annual basis for only the second time since the 2008 financial crisis. And boy, we're coming off some lofty numbers. I'm going to get down to the chart here. Monthly new lease asking rents percentage change from a year earlier. Redfin actually has that number going negative. Now, that's not what's happening uh, in Florida, all right? U.S. rental market slowing down after an unprecedented. Uh, in some markets, such as Miami and Riverside, California, monthly rents are up 35% or more over the past three years. But the high prices started to weaken demand for renters in the second half of 2022. A fall in rents would follow recent declines in the housing market, and it does make sense they should match up. But you've seen these home builders really take off and you've seen them take off because nobody's selling their house. If nobody's selling their house, you got to live somewhere, man. And rents are not a bad option when you got mortgage rates at 7%, folks. And it's a perfect segue to if you're considering getting a mortgage, there's nothing wrong with getting a 7% mortgage, man. Uh, and you're probably not going to pay 7%, especially if you go to a new builder. They'll incentivize that somehow. They'll get you down to some degree. But... They've talked about, you talk about marketing, right? It's a brilliant way to market it. Marry the house, date the rate, okay? And they're trying to say, you don't have to lock this rate in forever. And even what they're willing to do is they're willing to pay down your rate for a few years, right? Do a couple things saying, guess what, man? Rates are probably gonna be lower in a couple years. Folks, if you cannot afford that rate that you are signing on in perpetuity, then don't sign it because do not make the leap of calculating whether you can afford a house on the need for that mortgage to go down within a period of you know two three years with rates decreasing because that may not be the case man okay may not be the case we'll see how it plays out um but yeah they have that number actually sinking and you're talking about a negative with a decline of 0.6 percent in may is what red fine redfin is looking for and that would be only be the uh, second time since 2008 when, and the only other time is when the market briefly dipped in 2020 at the beginning of COVID. But before that, so we'll see, because real estate's a big driver of this, man. I don't see that abating anytime soon, though. Again, my opinion, nothing else. And how about, did you see the kids that survived for 40, 40 days in the forest after a train, uh, plane crash? Pretty remarkable, man. Col Colombian children survived on fruit, nuts, and wits after a crash in the Amazon jungle. Uh, just shows, man, try and teach your kids, man, because the oldest was 13, 40 days in the wild, man. They ate some fruit, they ate some seeds. Uh, they also had three pounds of yucca meal that they had on the plane. Uh, but nonetheless, man, they obviously had some skills that they had been taught as children because that is quite a scene. And yeah, so try and teach your kids, man, they're ever in an emergency, right, to have some whereabouts. You don't ever want to really, you know, you don't kind of plan for the worst of the worst, but 
you know, some type of semblance because you see, I mean, pretty remarkable how that happens, man. Yeah, they plowed through the trees like a missile slammed into the jungle's soft earth. The aircraft's single engine had been sheared off 30 feet away. I mean, just absolutely market. These poor kids, man, can't imagine what they went through, but they survived um, for 40 days in the jungle. Yeah, 13, 9, 5, and a one-year-old. Crazy. So kudos to those kids, man. Pretty remarkable uh, and a good deal for sure. I know. Imagine those stories, man. 40 days. Uh, and how about the 13-year-old? Obviously taking care of the one-year-old all of them. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be talking markets. TFNN right has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 22 points right now. NASDAQ gives up some of that acceleration. We were 100 points higher at about 9.10 this morning, 15,150. We're trading at 15,054, basically where we came into that CPI number at. As the markets give up some of that acceleration, the S&Ps right now uh, about 20 points above where we're at coming into that CPI number. You got the Dow up 160 points. How about the Russell right now? Up a full percent right now at 1840. We jumped to crude up $2.43, making its way to $70 potentially. You jump over to the gold contract. Look at that volatility, man. Gold up to 1984, down to 1968. You got to jump over to the dollar index when you see that type of action. The dollar rebounds a bit, right? We spiked down to 103.04. 
basically get all of it back from where we were on the CPI and you jump over to yields right now. Look at that, man. Absolutely remarkable moves. Yields. You got the 10-year up to 113.31, and just like that, we're at 113.11. You jump over. What are we talking about, man? Yeah, we're talking about a yield right now of 3.77. We were just at 3.7%. Just like that, we're at 3.77%. But guess what? Market loves it, man, with the S&P up by 25 points. And what else we have going on, folks? It is Tuesday. On Thursday, we have our man Tim Ord coming up with a live webinar at 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. He's going to be talking about trading gold. Okay. Now, he has two webinars. He did an S&P one last Thursday. He's doing a gold trading webinar this Thursday, June 15th. You can sign up for the gold webinar for $295. I encourage you to check it out, folks. Uh, Tim's been around for 35 years. Done a lot of business with my dad. He's been on with Dave White for a while, had been. He's been on with my dad for a while now. I mean, but you go back, right? Some of these timer of the year from the timer digest, which doesn't even exist anymore, unfortunately. Um, but he was number one gold timer for the year. Talking about 2006, number two gold timer of the year, 2004. And there are different methodologies he uses, folks. Okay, when you're talking about the gold market, he's talking about cycles. He's talking about ratios. He's talking about advanced decline, up and down. Finding extremes, very important, and putting it all together. Uh, Two-hour webinar coming up Thursday on the front page of TFNN. Check that out. And we got gold rocking right now. Thanks so much, folks. Stay tuned. We got Basil coming up next. Have a great Tuesday. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great one, everybody.